Okie dokie. We're back. And we got one. <laughs> one last best of three. With Hero and Silky. And I'm like, 99% sure Hero and Zest probably hate me right now. <laughs> no. They probably don't even remember who dropped. Yeah, well, actually, maybe it was Zest, because Zest might not actually know the English letters in a person's name well enough to recognize that it's me consistently. But Hero actually speaks some English. I've spoken with him before. So feels Zest bad. got an advantage English. Everything in Korea has an English alternative, so you gotta at least recognize. So you say that, but then I look at my friends list, and I know, for example, I've got Crank on my list, but I never know it's Crank when I look at it until I mouse over, because I don't recognize the way the Korean letters look. Well, that's because what I'm saying is literally everything in Korea is subtitled with an English word. So, like, you would at least recognize the characters if you lived your life with Hangul and every other subtext of your signs. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Do you so... know any French, though? Like, or is Vancouver <laughs> I know, a place that I know how has, to say like... cheese omelet in French. <laughs> yeah, of course you do. All right, guys. Last best of three coming up. I would say, like, <clears throat> truthfully, we'd cast all day if we could. There's just not a lot else to do today, and it's going to be the uh, same way tomorrow, too, with the Leaf Fang Finals. But uh, casting what we can, where we can, just trying to make December as big of a month as we can, trying to capitalize on that ad revenue bonus Twitch is handing out. It'd be really nice. Uh, at the, I'll, I'll let you guys know, at the rate we're going, Zombie Grub and I are looking to make what is hopefully a bonus 500 bucks through ad revenue. Which is cool. Woo. That's not anything close to accurate, though, <laughs> just yet. That's kind of like projected hope, hopeful projections. But uh, the fact is, we're only six days into December. I would love to cast all 29 and see like some really big payoff at the end of the day. But uh, we'll talk more on that some other time. Some people like hearing the money talk. Some people hate talking about money. We'll, we'll put an asterisk in it for the time being as we get into this final series today. Bets should not be on who wins, because at this point, I don't believe it matters. I think Hero gets the group pretty much no matter what. So maybe we could put bets on which game does Rifkin lag out in? One, two, or three? <laughs> That's the real question. Um, not a serious statement, Mods. Uh, in the bottom left side, we got the blue Protoss. He's got the capital O in his name, because it's X CJ Entis Hero. And then top right has the red Zerg. He is Silky. I'm waiting for the Wikipedia to update because this actually might be important for Silky. So breaking's completely out and Zest is guaranteed in. Um, although it might be first or second. But here is a 2-0 now. And he, if he wins here, he'd be at 2-1. Oh, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just gonna put it out there. If I if I lag out and the game ends 30 seconds later, it's Silky's fault. <laughs> <clears throat> Hero would be at a two. He'd be at three zero. He would automatically win. Silky would be at a one two. He'd be third place. But if Silky won, he'd be at two one, and Hero would also be at a two one, and then it would go down a map score between all three of them who have two ones. So, if they're both 2-1, the question really is, who won? Juan? He's a different guy. <laughs> How long is a Chinese man? That's still my favorite command. If you guys haven't seen it, I think I think the command's still there. Exclamation mark, how long? <laughs> Should link to a really stupid video that I hope some of you will enjoy. 4-2. No, he'd be CB. Maybe... Are you five? carrying the three, though? <laughs> it's actually kind of difficult to do the math of the map scores. I, I want to say that this actually might be important. If Silky, if Silky could 2-0, I think that would actually disrupt a lot of things. But even if he 2-1s, that might be key, too. I feel like... I'm going to click on this, and if, if this is so obvious to even someone like me, I'm going to be so I mad at you. Four. Okay, so what do we got here? Silky is... Uh, yeah, because then you would have beaten Hero and Zest couldn't beat Hero, so Silky could still get second place and beat Zest. But that only comes with a 2 0. Right, that's what I'm saying. Okay. If he gets a 2 1, then he would be 
five four. Wouldn't he still win against Zest? Well, because he lost against Zest. I don't know. Heads up? I don't know. <laughs> uh, actually, he might beat Zest just because if it's two one, because Zest did go O two to Hero, so that'd be one. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, right? Because he would have the better map score. And I don't think it matters if, like, the person you face is the person that doesn't right. have a connection. I mean, it would make sense if it goes by map score. That's how most round robins go. I don't know why you would do it any, any other way. So then map score, yeah, he would be able to beat Zest if it was 2-1. Interesting. Yeah. Well, this ends up being a somewhat important match then. Not for Hero. Hero is pretty much good to go. Uh, if Hero loses this, he'd also be a 2-1. Well, Hero would only be in trouble it's... if he was 0-2. Hero right? would be... Well, they'd all be 2-1 if he lost this, and then he'll go to the map scores between all three of them. Well, no, because Hero won 2-0 versus Zest. So his map score would probably be good enough. Yeah. Probably, yeah. That's what I'm saying, unless he wins 0-2, like, unless there's a 0-2 in the favor of Silky here, I think Hero's pretty much safe. Okay, well that still is something to consider. Not that I'm saying that Silky can do it. <laughs> Maybe, dude. If he if he doesn't do stupid link stuff like we saw versus S, and he goes Hydra's like he's doing, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe. But Hero starting things off with a, a depth attack, and this could take advantage of Silky's very low Hydra count. This is what I was kind of talking about the last series. Uh, well, two series ago actually, or three. Well, the point is the last PVZ we saw <laughs> with uh, the fast Hydras is that initially there's not too many of them. So you do have to kind of like wait until they're bulked up. And it's a little bit scary at this point because also not out. So the drones had been pulled immediately. A couple more could have gone down. Ooh, but you but... see the Hydra pop out here and get KO'd. Yeah, the Hydra's only good when there's a lot of them. One or two at a time is not going to cut it. The Adepts have so much bonus damage versus light. It's a non-issue for them. 22 a shot. I mean, yikes. He does pull yeah. away from this. I think he could have stayed and dedicated a little bit longer, to be honest, but I like the idea of bulking this up. He's going for the Robo Bay, so we're going to see some Colossus or maybe even Disruptors. I don't know which is better. For those who don't know, a Colossus without Extended Thermal Lance, the Hydras actually outranged them with their range upgrade. So fast Colossus it is, and it looks to be a two-base Colossus attack against a Zerg player. I don't remember the last time I've seen this. Wings of Liberty? I... <laughs> I actually don't even know. Usually it's it's three base or or some other non Colossus two base aggression. Uh, we've seen it versus Terran once or twice. You see like two Colossus and you, you kind of like stare scare them for days, but God, the last time I've seen two Colossus attack into a Zerg player on two bases. <clears throat> well, in the olden days you could try and win with roaches covering your hydras and like just get a good concave. You could also try and fit in a spire, but it was pretty difficult to do because again you're on a not the greatest economy so we like you're gonna have only a certain number of hydras and a certain number of corruptors and will that actually be enough here was expanding at the gold okay buddy calm down that's called confidence i like the hallucination a lot actually we saw this earlier too but that was a fake no real colossus this time the real colossus mows through the links black powder on the ground Hydra's are gonna die. Silky doesn't stand a snowball's chance in hell. That's game. GG. By the way, this has actually been asked on our YouTube. So hopefully, hopefully this ends up in a VOD that somebody's gonna watch. And maybe some of you on Twitch don't know this, but you're wondering like, why is there black powder on the ground? Why do units like we had that perfect disruptor hit on Ryung the other day, and you know some of the Reddit comments were like, why why did that look so lame? It has nothing to do with my graphic settings. Korea is very, like, anti-violence, so there's no real blood. Like, you cannot turn it on. Like, StarCraft 2 has, like, a reduced violence option that is, like, forced on in Korea. So units don't die maliciously. They don't have blood splurt everywhere. But on the other servers, you'll see that, and it looks hilarious. But uh, reduced violence is forced on, and it kind of sucks. Although, hang on. I've just unchecked it. I've never in the history of us doing this. I've tried almost every time we've ever been on. That has been forced on. I just was able to oh, uncheck it. Been alive. Well, actually, life. but hang on. They changed the wording to it, though. Because what it... Okay, so what it says right now is when enabled, limits the amount of blood displayed in-game during cutscenes. So maybe this doesn't have anything to do with the in-game graphics anymore, and it's just for the cutscenes, and Korea's just forced off, like, 100%. Mm. 
And I love, by the way, too, on top of it saying cutscenes only, it also turns off the damage specific to Terran units. So that, like, we don't care if Zerg die maliciously in this cinematic. That's fine. Who cares? But Terran, they look like people, and that's not okay. <laughs> but let's see if this works. I just turned it off. I, I like, I, I can't show you guys, obviously. Um, but in the past, that button has been grayed out. Like, actually, I can't show you. One second for your game. Right here. This has always been grayed out and unclickable. No chance to change it. No option to fiddle with it. This is going to be amazing if I can finally get some blood effects going in Korea. But also, I don't know if that's intentional. It might be fixed and I could get in trouble for doing this. <laughs> I don't know. I have never noticed. So, this is all on you, man. <clears throat> yeah, well, I've been very adamant about trying to... Like, for example, uh, on Korea, you don't see those cool death animations, right? Spine crawler kills a marine and his corpse gets ripped from its legs and thrown into space. Like, I look for that all the time and it never happens. So, we'll find out if this worked, guys. There's no tear in here, so it might not actually have an effect. Again, the wording in the description, I'll show you guys here, specifically uh, goes to Terran. And yeah, there we go. So, <clears throat> maybe it's just out of game for the cinematics, because now that we're in game, I can't click it. Like, it's not clickable anymore. Oh, I got so excited that maybe we'd have some gross violence back. But anyways, it's game number two. He just got wrecked in map number one. Can he turn it around? In the top left, it's going to be the blue Zerg player, Silky. In the bottom right has the red Protoss. He is Hero. Okay, so I think it's safe to say Hero's secured at this point. Now the question comes down to, because we're not sure, if Silky can still turn this around and win 2-1... If that's good enough to beat Zest out in or not. I don't actually knew. But that being said, with how good that looked at a hero, I don't think Silky's gonna get a 2-1 for him. No, I don't think so either. I mean, Silky, I think, was kind of in the trap of too many same build PVZs. Like, if you play ladder and you face six Protoss and they all go Dark Templars, you're guaranteed to try and just like build or account to the seventh guy. Even if it's like a totally random person, I feel like that's what happened to Silky. Poor unfortunate Silky was like, I'm gonna get him. I got, I, I got this man. Like I'm gonna totally deflect his DTs. I'm gonna win. <laughs> oh shit, it's not DTs. So yeah. maybe I'll do better here. Maybe I'll actually like react as opposed to try and, and do something so harsh. Uh, and I don't know if that'll work any better because it hasn't in the past. But eh, maybe I don't know. Uh, thank you very much to Kimeg12 for the 11 month resub. Thank you very much. I think I could actually throw a couple bucks in the donation jar the other night, too. So, really awesome dude. Uh, <clears throat> people are talking about, like, in the Chinese client for Dota, they don't have skulls and stuff. It's actually not just limited to Asia. There's been a lot of really weird censorship around violence in video games for a long time, guys. I know that, for example, I think it was uh, Doom in Germany. Or, no, it wasn't Doom. There's some zombie game that came out in Germany where uh, you could not make anything look like a human. So, the zombies even got completely redone in the German version of the game. Like, huh. if you if you actually are really bored on one of those nights and go on YouTube, like, you should actually look up some of the way games have been censored in other countries, because sometimes it's hilarious. I can't remember which game it was, but it was some, like, uh, like you know, Super Nintendo era game where they had replaced all death animations with, like, Mickey Mouse popping up and covering the character as their body disappeared. Dude, I've never heard of that. Yeah, there's, there's some weird censorship that's gone on through video games. I guess I'm I'm you know coming from Canada you know America whatever like we're pretty used to having not a lot of uh, oh violence is our jam yeah right exactly blood and gore everywhere guts yeah gears of but war nipples? baby mm, no nipples that's a no no right that's, that's another thing I don't get why sex our youth. sex is so taboo in American culture and I'm really curious as to why it's it's certainly taboo in Canada as well but listen to europeans talk about it on like talk shows and stuff it's 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 always surprising to me that it's so drastically different and sex is the one thing that we do on a pretty common you know basis yeah you don't regularly Violence kill people right yeah <laughs> although maybe that's why they're like that it's not thing. guns that kill people right it's the violent nice. video games if you recall yeah maybe that is why we do it though we don't feel the same like impact as we do when we imagine something that's never going to happen to us like guns ablazing but when it comes to sex, we're all uncomfortable because it happens to us. And we're like, I don't want to turn off the kiss and tease. I don't want to. <laughs> interesting. Uh, what's more interesting, though, is that Silky A is going for fast hydras again, which really looked like his answer to Zest in particular, but might just be 
a build he likes to do. I feel like this it, is what a lot of people were doing when Hydras were first buffed. Like, the first week was just like, you know, go straight to Hydras and, you know, don't die to anything else, hopefully. But then well, they realized that wasn't actually the way you could always go, and they started changing things up. What straight up killed me, though, was, like, they, it worked really well versus Zest when he did it, but then followed up with two games of him not doing it. So it's hard for me to be like, yeah, this is his go-to build, because it's clearly not. However, this time versus Hero, he busted out game number one, fails, goes for it again in game two. So I don't know how to read Silky, man. He's like, oh, this worked versus Zest. I better never do it again. Oh, it didn't work versus Hero? Let's go for round two. <laughs> I guess in that first game, there was the Adept attack. So the lack of Adept attack maybe is telling him, like, uh, I don't have to, I don't have to, like, you know, be as scared about going for Hydras. I'm not sure. There still are going to be Adepts. There's Resident Glaives on the way, too. But what's a lot more interesting is that Hero is going straight to Storm. So, like, it replaced the Colossus, replaced the all with Colossus, gives Storm instead, and also a third base. I actually don't know how this is going to look. Like, if it was some type of two-base Storm attack, like, that would have been super cool along the same lines as the Colossus. But when it comes to defending, like, Silky's going to realize what's happening, hopefully soon. You know, scout the third base get to his own decent economy and push in with Roach Hydra. And then we'll, we'll, we will have to look at the effectiveness of Storm versus the new and improved Hydra Lisk. And like, is that actually the answer? I, I don't know. If there's been a macro game so far, it's been either slow build up of Colossus or the macro games we saw before the patch, which are like gateway based, not Storm. I'm excited to see how Storm's going to play out. I think there's a lot of cool potential for it, but and yeah, there might just be potential at best. Either way, the storm drops are not too shabby. They do certainly spook the heck out of Silky. Eight drones die, and he pulled most of them off mine. He just barely in the nick of time. Minding everybody, of course, this is always pertinent to come back for round two when they've got some energy, so certainly scary if we see more. Mm -hmm. Well, a hey, uh, hero is making quite a intimidating force with a lot of adepts, oh. the storms, but Silky... I think all of those important upgrades. By the way, I may have um, not fixed the reduced violence option, but it may have also broken something too, because I do want to point out, we just saw red blood on the ground instead of black blood, guys. But, uh, again, I'm not able to change the options in-game, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> like Millions of, like, 12-year-olds playing StarCraft 2 are just being like, guys, guys, I got red blood, it's amazing. Well, that's, hack. that's something where I'm wondering like, if it's intended to be able to be uh, fiddled with that. I don't know. Also, I gotta change this to one bit so it doesn't make that sound, but thank you Black Panther for the cheer. Uh, we got a lot of storms. A lot of storms. And whether it's roaches or hydras or lings, storms are gonna do some pretty nice damage. Burn them all and turn into some archons afterwards. Hydra's getting absolutely melted. Oh my god. Uh the army supply though is holding up better for Silky, all things considered, and yeah, I thought this was going to be a lot, lot more better. devastating. Well, he was actually so much more roach heavy that the storms, well, yes, intimidating looking, weren't actually killing the units. And the fact that Silky responded so quickly, and a lot of that had thanks to the creep, he was able to surround the army. I don't think Hero imagined that's the way the attack was going to go, just positional wise. And he has to make up quite a lot now. Well, the Adepts are fully cleaned up. They get a couple of drone kills here and there. Really, this hasn't been anything too phenomenal for Hero, because look at that army supply. The counterattack at a Silky should be able to shut him down. 90 army supply to 29. Force fields are good, but I don't... I don't think they're going to beat out <laughs> 60 supply I, lead. I just don't understand what's happening with our Protosses today. It's like, well, we can win as easily as possible, or we're going to try something weird and lose. Well, so to that extent, I would bring up the topic we've discussed many times with players like Snoot, right? Who have said that they really enjoy practicing builds in cups like these, where players are perhaps playing a little bit harder than they are in the ladder. Obviously, it's not worked, and maybe Hero never tries it again, but this also could have just been an experimental phase. Either way, it looks like the third base hit of the probe is mostly pulled away from it, so there's minor losses there. He tries to hold on the ramp, but the Gravagers break the force fields. Charge isn't done for these Zealots. Immortals aren't out, and I'm pretty sure Hero is going to tap out. GG. Yeah, already then. But, because time is of the essence, and I don't know if we're going to lag out, guys. Quick two-minute break. We'll see you for game three. Okay, folks, we're back and loading into game number three. Po not even possibly. This is the last series today. This is the last game of the last series today. 
as things are tied up now one to one. I do want to make a bit of a public service announcement, however. I just retweeted these tweets, so if you go to my Twitter, they're the first and only thing you'll see at the top of my feed, well, other than my pinned tweet. Uh, a guy in this esports scene who some of you may not know and thus might be like a little bit wary of, however, I would like to vouch for, Panic Switched, is kind of doing a really cool thing. He wants to do something big. Oh, for Starcraft. Uh, Hero, come on, man. I'm trying to talk about stuff. Uh, he's doing something big. He wants to do a $5,000 tournament for Starcraft, but it's got to be an interesting and a different format. So if you guys have ever had the idea for something cool, you want to pitch it to your favorite content creator, whether it's us, whether it's Warty, maybe it's Fear Dragon, I don't know. Either way, contact him. See if you can get something set up. Make something cool happen for StarCraft. But anyways, uh, not bothering with player introductions because this is a good old fashioned three gate. No gases. Are you going to build zealots? What? Who only goes for three gate? Who builds zealots? That's a better question. I was going to say it has to be for a gas. Otherwise, if it's zealots, it's four gateways. Well, this Sometimes gets six. This gets discovered. Yeah. But so here's, under... here's the thing though, he pulls the probe away and there's no pilot at home, so he can't build a cyber core. I don't know. Uh. Oh, okay, here we go. It might just be a little bit delayed. Yeah, it's like eventually there's now. gotta be one. Like, <laughs> what else did you get the guess? Um, I don't know why Hero is depending on this for the last game. Like, we just went over how the numbers still means that Hero isn't technically, like, guaranteed for the tournament. Or was he guaranteed, but Zest wasn't guaranteed. Well, I hope he knows he where like, he sits. <laughs> I think it's like the sickest move he's guaranteed, but Zest isn't. So he's like, not exactly throwing the last game, but like kind of screwing over Zest here. <laughs> uh, this is where we bring up the topic of match fixing and hesitate to talk about that further. But man, three Zealots do get made. Four, five, six Zealots maybe even? He's going deep with this. However, yeah. it might still work. I don't know. Like, we haven't actually seen this in so long. Well, um, definitely getting the spine curl up in the main base. I guess you're just going to have to give up the hatchery here. It, last time I saw this recently was on Vanna Research Station, and that was a kind of a different game because the natural is so far away. Like, the main is the first thing attacked. But here, like, I think the natural is just a, you have to give it up. And hope that the spine crawler and queen in the, in the main actually deals with it, but he's not going to give it up. I should have bring the spine crawler down, but the queen and Ling's kind of oh, blocked they're him blocking out here. it out. This is bad. Of course, for those who don't know, Zella can one v one a queen, as cool as that is, unless she kites on creep and does it perfectly. But you just get a lock away oh, from the spine crawler. Says, you know what? Reinforcements can deal with that. I'm just going to go to the main. Really should not have lost that second queen quite yet. Of course, the adept's coming out. Uh, well. They can just transfer micro, past so. the spine crawler too. That's that's the worst part. Sits in the mineral line, tries to get some of that surface area tension working on his side, and it's going not too bad. These zealots are going to die, but they'll take out some more units with them. Now the question is, can the follow up do more? Um, there's no natural base for hero. This is still very all in. He's, he's, he's dedicating really hard to making this happen. <laughs> well, the base isn't quite dead. The adept, as you said, though, can just shade past this spine crawler and if they get into that mineral line the lanes are ahead of time killing all of them uh there's only five though and i think that might be enough lanes to do so uh -oh. even in the mineral <coughs> if he had actually sat between the spawning pool and the hatchery he would have had all five in a perfect straight line mm. the baliness is on the way and silky might just still end up holding uh, that hatchery is going to go down so never mind it's in that mineral line position. I mean, still attack the hatchery. Killing the hatchery though builds a bunch. It spawns a bunch of brood legs, and that could work against Hero. And I think that's probably why he's not focusing it down. I mean, as long as it's not mining, I guess it's not so bad. But this gives him so much time to get the Baneling nest up. And I actually really truthfully think with Banelings, Silky holds. He's still in a pretty decent drone count at 19. Yeah, yeah, he is. Oh. Hero's yeah, well, following up with the Stargate? What the f Well, I, I like the idea of the Stargate more than that in a moment, though, because I do want to point out that, you know, Silky's Overlord sits above Hero's natural. He sees that there's no no natural base down for Hero. He knows how committed this is. Oh, no, the hatchery. Oh, no, the hatchery. Again, okay, he's trying so hard not to trigger it before his adepts can hide from the, <laughs> the brood legs. That's kind of funny. 
Uh, the probe over here is almost like fake. Again, the, the Stargate's going to cost a lot of minerals. He's continuing to warp units in. The Mothership Corps may even fly across the map. Banelings are out, but Banelings will not reach these Adepts too easily. Oh, no. Oh, four of them go for two. That's not worth it. Now going to transfer through to the main. No, oh, they hide in the back corner. I don't think Silky realized. I think he may have thought for a brief moment that there was a cancel, but now he just walks to that prime spot in the mineral line. Queen could get focused down. He's shooting drones instead. I think staying in this position might have been better, but he transfers away. You know, if he kills, uh, if he kills, not you know, he doesn't even need to kill the queen. The oracle is going to be able to finish off both of them. Well, that'll probably be the perfect timing. Send both the adepts and the oracle in. I don't know what the green goo was on the camera right there. Baby, baby, just floating or something, but. Uh, yeah, the combination of oracles. Oh, he actually shades it with the adepts before the oracle's quite ready, and he does well, do it into a chainlink as he was well. He was focusing down the queen. He wanted to try and remove the anti-air before the oracle came into the equation, and he yeah, does a great job so. of it. No anti-air remains, GG! Mm -hmm. Hero will lock so down the series 2-1. to one. So silly. <laughs> it, it was. It really was. But okay, that wraps up the Leaf Fang Cup cast. I certainly hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to be transitioning out here in a moment. We'll get Zombie up to say goodbyes before we go to our final commercial break. But uh, we're going to be doing some co-op. So if you guys like co-op, if you like brutal mutations, if you like the most difficult version of the co-op possible, you're going to watch us struggle through it in a moment or two. Um, but if you guys enjoyed the cast, I hope you'll follow the channel and come back for all future casts. We're getting close to 70,000 followers, which... Honestly, in the truth of things, doesn't mean much, but it's a cool, accomplished number to hit, so we'd certainly love to hit the number. Follow us. But uh, let's see here. So I'm going to have any, any shout-outs before we go? Uh, Yourself, your Twitter, all that. You know. You I'm know just confused what I mean by going. Well, I'm going to play the commercial break, and then you'll be going to your stream, right? I guess that's true. Okay. Uh, follow me on Twitter at CG Gaming and on Twitch at Zombie Grub and on YouTube at Zombie Grub. Okay. I don't think I'll be streaming. I'll just take, take a video. Oh, okay. Well, either way, um, I'll be streaming my end here so you'll at least get to see my point of view. You can always check out Zombie Grubs. A lot of people don't know this. Like, we upload the co op to our, our base trade TV, the joint YouTube, every single week, but people don't know that you can check out her point of view as well on her YouTube. So um, make sure to check out her YouTube channel. For me, follow me on Twitter, riff underscore kings, all this good stuff. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you guys in a bit. Thanks for watching. Nope. Hold the phone. Reddit thread I want to talk about. Oh, so, God. I, I'm not gonna, I haven't opened this thread. I don't know what's inside, but I do want to just explain something really quick. Um, someone made a post saying, Bay Street TV casting Lee Fang Cup again. Kind of a scumbag move to cannibalize viewers from a tournament Wardy has really put a lot of development into. <sighs> so, again, we have no, no ill will against Wardy, guys. And we certainly didn't start casting this because we're like, yeah, let's fuck over Wardy, right? We, again, like I really want to publicly state, I like Wardy. We like Wardy. He's a good guy. This tournament, however, is not organized by Wardy, nor does Wardy put money into it as far as I'm aware. This is organized by people in China, and they asked us to come cast it. So, I haven't read that thread. I'm probably not going to see those replies, so I just wanted to clarify that. Because this seems like the perfect kind of circle jerk to hate base trade TV on. I'm sure people will jump on it, but I want the facts to at least be out there. So anyways, thanks for watching. Going to restart some things, get the American client up. I'll see you guys in two minutes for co-op time.